Okay, so this whole thing really um, happened when I saw a post on Facebook Marketplace for an AGS 101 Game Boy. And the Game Boy wasn't in great condition, but anyway, so I just want to run some background. This video was sparked because another person contacted me later last week asking whether or not I've dealt with a certain person that I've commented on posts with before and I said no I have not I didn't get really good vibes and then we figured out that this guy as well was a scammer I'll start off my post go through the process of how I detected that there's something's not right and then I'll do my other friend's post so it started with a post that I put up on the 4th of May I think all of this took place on the 3rd or so um, so all of this took place on the 4th of May. Um, so I just said to the, the Retro Gaming South Africa group, um, beware of possible scam. Also, I couldn't prove it was a scam because I actually didn't get scammed. Um, it was all speculation at this point. So lately there's been people that got conned with Game Boys. And once again, that was a lot of posts that I've seen on this group. Uh, specifically people saying that they've got conned um, with Game Boy stuff. Now I believe there's another example of this. Uh, so the seller had a very worn AGS 101 for 750 Rand. I contacted him, he sent me photos, the thing looked like it was uh, to World War II and back. And I said to him that I'm not rather not going to take it. And then all of a sudden, he has two additional consoles with five games. And he asked me if I want to make him an offer in the bulk. I decided to lowball him at 1,750 Rand and he accepted it. Not even 30 minutes later, I get the, I just got a higher offer, but if you pay me 500 Rand, then I will, we can keep our deal. I was like, dude, I live in the same city as you. I, we can literally meet up now, but he kept, in, kept on insisting. Then my detective skills started pulling in. I ran his number through Truecaller and surprise, surprise, it's not O'Brien. After I told him that the deal was off, he kept messaging me saying that he felt guilty he felt and that it's okay if I just pay him 350 rand if he wanted. The moral of the story is if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. By no means I'm saying that I would have gotten scammed, but the evidence is there. Facebook profile with no personal photo and also same like with created within a couple of days. Uh, cell phone number not belonging to the profile name, upfront payment requested, consult, uh, uh, constant persuasive measures to deal um, after the deal was stay safe. And then um, what got really scary is in, in the comment section, a lot of the people agreed with the type of stuff, but then a lot of like random people that clearly have no business in the retro gaming group started commenting that say that they also got scammed and that you have to go to what some cyber spy dude on Instagram and God bless and there were so many of these comments that I decided to turn off the comments. I, I dig the Don Washer's uh, comment saying surname Connor only if I So I'm just going to go through some of the examples on the, um, the WhatsApp messages. So he sent me a bunch of pictures but I asked him exactly what the models were and I'm almost sure that I've got the exact same red one and then he sent me some pictures of it. Then he says AGS 101 which is the frontlet version. Um, and then th this is a, a clear indication of almost it is a scam and the guy has no clue what he's talking about. When they ask you, does your one also come with installed games? My brew, it's a Game Boy. It uses Game Boy cartridges. So that already was a giveaway and there's been about five other posts on the local Facebook marketplace where people are selling um, Game Boy Colors for three, 400 Rand, and always it says, comes with pre-installed games. Anyway, so he says, then, then I, asked, so I asked him if he had any games, and he said, yes, he has about three, uh, four or five. Then he sent me some photos. Obviously, baiting with the Hamtaro, because people, for some reason, want Hamtaro, including myself. 
Um, and he also was clever enough to mark one scratched out as if it was sold uh, for a bit more persuasion. Um, one thing also to note is you'll see from photo to photo the, the flooring and the backgrounds and stuff changes. Anyway, moving on, I then made the offer of uh, 1750 and he said he, he would do it because it will go to a nice home and whatnot. And another giveaway, by the way, where are you located? I'm Lorraine. Crap, is that in France, if I'm not mistaken? My dude, you're chatting to a guy on social media in South Africa. And you claim you live in the same city. So, then again. Then he said, but don't freak out, someone just offered me 950 for the one on my ad. But since you asked first, I would be willing to sell a lot, but will you be able to do a from up balance so I know you're serious about the deal? So I asked him, do you want to pay money now? And he said, nah, nah man, nah man. Uh, not the, the whole amount, just the small front up balance so I know that you're serious and won't be losing customers. So I said, okay, how much? And then he started with like some other weird ass deal of you can take two and I'll refund you if the other one is a counterfeit and so forth. And he asked me for 500 rand. And at this point, I've already made up my mind that I will not be dealing with this guy. But I thought, you know, let's let's play a bit with him. So I asked him, so what's your name? And he said, Brian. Um, also, at this point, I've already done the true caller search. Um, so I knew that his name wasn't Brian. And then I'm not going to bore you with all of the stuff. But he then also... Um, had an ad up on his Facebook selling an N64, which was the most ridiculous N64 ad ever. It was some weird modded thing that was found on Etsy that he uses a picture which docked a, a Nintendo Switch. So for some reason he thought he's going to fool people. Anyway, moving on. So I asked him if he was the same guy with the N64. Um, then he said no. Nope. And which is weird because it was on his profile. So I'm assuming also that this profile is managed by multiple people. Um, then he sent me a number to an e -wallet. Now, I've actually, I haven't checked the, this number yet on, on Truecaller. So this could be, could be interesting because at the time that I checked it, there was no name linked to this number and I assume oh okay so this uh, number is now linked to no man new business venture at, at the time of you know the almost getting scammed that number wasn't linked to anything yet. long story short send all the information his banking details making it sound like you know he's now trusting me with his banking details which means nothing and so forth and then it was just a lot of back and front and then after I told him that the deal is off he tried to persuade me a lot kept on saying to him look this is not gonna happen um, he then sent me a once off video of his collection claiming that it's his collection shocker for him I know the guy whose actual collection it is and he basically just got a video from this guy and voice over it and then he started showing me some other stuff that he has, which is also not his, which is the guy I, I, that I know. Another thing to keep clear of is the fact that they then ask, may I see your collection? Never, ever, ever send a picture of your collection to anyone. I know we all want to brag about the awesome stuff we've got, but they're probably just going to use it to scam someone else. So just never. Or if you do send your collection, make sure you watermark the photo. So let's talk about the three main um, steps to take um, on, on Facebook Marketplace. So the first thing would be to check when the guy's profile was made. Um, in this case, we can't see it anymore because the guy's content was removed. But checking out that the profile wasn't created in the same year, um, is a good idea 
Um, step two is to look at other items that they've got for sale, like I did. I started asking him about items and he wasn't able to give me any answers on it. Um, also, you would, I would find it strange if someone is selling retro consoles as a specialist, but also selling very, very high-end tools. I would not trust that. Uh, at all. And then step three is to use Truecaller. So in this case, uh, the guy claimed that his name was Brian Connor. Um, surprise, surprise. And if you run his number to Truecaller, um, you will see it comes up as Luke Mon Kasim. I called him out and he said, no, dude, I don't trust this Truecaller. says your name isn't Brian deals off. They said, yes, it's uh, Likman Kasim because my S10 fell and now it doesn't want to come on, so I'm using my son's phone. Apparently, if your phone falls, you can't take your SIM card out and use it in another phone. Um, but anyway, then he started still trying to persuade me and whatnot. Okay, so let's talk about things to avoid. Upfront payment is an absolute no-go. Don't do any upfront payments. E-wallets, just no e-wallets, and also do not share your address, and also do not share pictures of your collection. Then, things that they do to try and persuade you to go forward with the deal, things like the sharing of the video of their collection that they might have stolen from someone else, uh, constantly sharing more stuff of interest. Uh, it might go from a Game Boy all the way to I've got an Atari T600, I've got a, a Sega Saturn, whatever. And then always be wary of the oh shit, someone just offered me more money. I'm sorry, I have to do this. However, if you pay me now, we can keep on it. So that's just things to that they do to like get you to, to pay up. Um, so just, just watch out for that. Okay, so then I've got another um, person that contacted me. Um, unfortunately, all the attachments is not available anymore. Um, however, I won't share his name, but he is a fellow Port Elizabethan or Quebecian. I don't know which we go for now. But he contacted me on the 7th of June saying, Hi, Andre, just checking quickly if you um, dealt with a certain person's name. And did he show you the game and did you receive it? Thanks. And I said to him, uh, I first had to make sure because I, I buy quite a bit of games. So I said to him, yeah, is this the guy that sold the so-called Switch game? And he said, yes, um, I saw you, you were selling it a week ago. And I said to him, no, I ended up not taking it because I got a, a weird vibe. I really did get a weird vibe um, from it. And then he goes on and says, yeah, he, um, also got a weird vibe from it and uh, ended up not doing it. Um, so he was almost scammed out of 5,000 Rand for a NES setup um, that this person claimed he had. And um, I will now switch over to my, to my phone to show you how exactly we did a Google reverse image search. Um, to make sure that this guy was not going to get scammed and I can definitely advise you to always if you are in doubt do an image search it is not 100% guaranteed but there is only so many images on the internet and the image recognition on Google is getting better and better by the day so we're going to switch over to my phone and we're going to come back. Uh, a quick easy one. So this is the, the person on Facebook that contacted me regarding the uh, potential scam that I was getting at. And you can see it's a lot of photos of NESs and, or NES games at least and then the NES system itself. So what I like to do is I like to just take a screenshot <laughs> so I know that there's no metadata or behind it or EXIF data. And then you go into the Google Lens option and just upload your picture. A Google Lens will do all the work. Um, you can then do, so, so Google automatically detected that it was an NES system. Um, and then it shows you some related um, items. But then you can take it one step further. You can add to your um, result. 
So you can say add and you can say Facebook for instance. And lo and behold, from 2019 items sold, or this post was actually from 2018, from like an entire different country. Um, and yeah, so this guy obviously just got this image off of there and then tried to sell it. Um, I mean, this not, isn't even in, in South Africa. So unless this guy bought it and tried to resell it, I highly doubt it. But we know for a fact that that's not the case. And there you have it. That's my tips on how to scout out a scammer. Um, remember, these guys are getting cleverer by the day. They're getting desperate. They need, um, uh, I guess, money for stuff. Uh, so my parting words, if a deal seems too good to be true, it probably is. If you liked this video and if it was helpful, um, please hit the like button, comment down below, um, and just consider subscribing. And yeah, that was my video on how not to get scammed. I'm Alfred Old 1292. Until the next one, cheers.